Okay, reassembly time. Double check, make sure these gasket surfaces are clean. And we'll apply a little bit of uh, gasket tack to them. Let them sit. Oh, we get everything else lined up, cleaned up. I'll make sure all these mating surfaces are dry and clean. Should be dry by now. <laughs> A little spots to clean up. I gotta do on this one. Wipe that down. Shiny and clean. Double check here. One or two little spots I gotta clean up here. This one. Little tiny one over here. And even little tiny ones. Trust me, oil can leak out of the tiny places too. And if you create gouges in here that the gasket sealer, that the gasket doesn't fill, and the sealer doesn't fill, you're in for a world of hurt. So again, be very, very careful cleaning these surfaces off. Clean and dry. Now this oil channel is always going to have a little oil in it, so it's going to be hard to get that totally dry. Just keep that in mind when you go to put the gasket sealer back on here. Remember your clamp, my other clamp wound up finding in the oil drain bucket. It's, uh, it's over in my bin over here. Parts bin. Okay. We look clean and dry up here. a little Permatex high tack gasket seal that we put on here. It's just a, a brush on and there's a spray on variety that I've used in the past. Either one of them will work nicely. Just a thin kind of a bead. You don't need a ton of it. It's enough to kind of hold the gasket in place. This can will last you a lifetime of doing clutches on Marauders. Painting that on all the, the mating surface there. We'll wipe up any excess when we go to put this thing together. Catch any drips. It tacks right up very, very quickly in this warm, dry air out here. And that's what they want you to do. They want it tacked up. Get it, you're ready to put your gasket in place. Everything's tacky. Paint some of that right over the motor so that the gasket sticks in place. Just be careful, obviously, not to get it on the parts of the motor you don't want it on. Apparently this stuff says ex danger extremely flammable on it. Well, don't smoke, so I don't have to worry about that. Now here comes a whole bunch of oil out. Right. Hit that part there. So we'll take a paper towel and wipe a little of that oil off of there. But of course, doing all kinds of flammable stuff while you're doing this is probably not a good idea regardless. So I keep the sparks and the flames away from the uh, Surfaces are painted up. Sealers on. Let's get a little 
little dab to the left of that oil jet without blocking it up. Two other little gaskets that go on either side of that clutch uh, bracket. That's these. We ordered those along with the uh, whole rest of the assembly. They're all visible in the, in the parts diagram. And then, of course, our gasket. Now, what I do is, uh, what I prefer to do is kind of set the gasket in place. There's a little ferrule here and another little ferrule in the clutch cover. And I'll give you a, a place to line things up. Make sure you get them on in the right, uh, right side. Line it up with the bolts, holes where they need to be so you can see the light all the way through the holes. And they line up nice and clean. And that gasket will just kind of hang on here, it won't fall off. That's the beauty of this gasket sealer. Ready for this carpet to go back on. I could probably paint the gasket itself with some too. I know some people do do that. I have not. What's the direction say? It says blah. Can't read it. Perfect for alignment and assembly, threaded fittings, hose connections. That 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 never hardens, prevents the energy. Made in disassembly, resistor to gasoline oil, all that kind of stuff. Thin even coat to all surfaces. Well, I don't know whether that means all surfaces of the gasket or all surfaces of the gasket's being applied too. So. You know where I am going to put some extra, maybe on the gasket itself, is right to, right here where that oil galley is, because it's just not really sticking real well on the, uh, on the motor side of things, because of all the oil running out of there, so we'll take care of that. Just like that there. Okay. All right, now comes the fun part, because I did not take the uh, the rack bolt out here. It's a matter of getting those pinion gears all aligned. And you know what I said before? Remember which way the teeth on the clutch release rack face. They face the rear of the motorcycle. Okay. Now here comes the cover. Clutch cable still attached. Everything coming back into place. Yeah, you know, if I had thought about it, I probably would have took out the little, uh, the little oil rack in there and cleaned out the window. There's a little little piece you can pop out inside there and clean that oil window out but makes it easier to see your oil level. But what I do want to clean out while I'm in here is any leaves and debris that may have blown in while this thing was sitting open for several hours. Alright, almost there. Gasket's lined up real nice. Paint it up, all oh, kind of pretty. All right, that part goes on the top. And well, since I didn't snap that apart, we don't have to worry about where that goes. All right, then. Nothing on that oil jet that doesn't belong in that oil jet. You know, feel that rack go into place, but you gotta make sure that that arm is pointed where it needs to be pointed. And that's more or less straight back toward the center of the motorcycle. And that's basically where it wants to point, more or less at the oil filler. Okay, we're going to get some bolts on. All right, gang, just about final assembly time here. Two washers that we're going to need, a set of bolts. And I guess it doesn't really matter too much where you start. Correct tightening torque on these guys is eight pound feet, eight pound feet. So eight times 12 is 96 inch pounds. So we're gonna set up our torque wrench for 96 inch pounds. So that's, uh, it's at 84 right now, so that's 85. And then we're gonna go all the way around to 10. I know that's 95, so that's 96. Should be about four clicks less than 100. One, two, three, four, there's 100. One, two, three, four. All right, so we're back at 96 inch pounds. 
All right, and my socket that I'm going to use for these is a, a deep well um, quarter inch drive. So I've got a quarter inch drive adapter on the uh, torque wrench. And uh, deep well, uh, don't think I'll need the extension. It's a deep well, it's a 10 millimeter little guy. Doesn't really matter where you start, just use the right bolt and the right hole. But more than anything else, I'm going to kind of dry fit these bolts by hand to make sure that the gap, they, you know. If they go through the holes, they line up in the gaskets. Maybe I'll use my extension to do that. My extension. Just give me something to put the crank on here. That feels like it's in. And, uh, you see, as this cover came down, now that clutch rack is a little bit further back. I may have to wind up pulling that arm off of there to get enough uh, get enough disengagement. We'll, uh, we'll fight with that if I have to throw a little PB blaster on there and break that loose. Because that pinion has teeth, or the, the, yeah, the pinion gear has teeth all the way around. So it's just a matter of, uh, just a matter of lining up the arm so that the clutch has the appropriate, the clutch cable has the appropriate amount of pull to release the clutch. Okay, eight pound feet. Torque wrench is already set up. We're going to go around and torque these bolts down. Torque wrench is set up, but where'd I put it? <laughs> there it is underneath the shop towel. Okay. This time I'm going to use an extension, but I am going to use my hand to just kind of keep it uh, keep it nice and straight. Click. 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 <laughs> Click. 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 One more. Click it. Hold on. Click. There it goes. It's tight. All right. Cover's on. I don't like the position that that. Uh, that, that release arm is sitting in so we might have to do something about that but let's see what happens let's see how much adjustment play we have. okay so i may have mentioned before the boneheaded maneuver i pulled uh, many 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 miles ago changing oil on his bike one day when i decided i would get a little overzealous with the torque on the uh, washer what i wound up with is a nita N-E-E-D-A, question mark. Need a uh, oversized uh, 12 millimeter bolt. Because there, I guess, was some threads left in there. I didn't have to Healy coil it. And the number of that, here's the, here's the info on that bolt. I don't know if you can read it in the camera. There, yeah, there you go. Number on that is the uh, Nita 6523 oversized M12.1.75 length bolt and it comes with a plastic washer and it had worked pretty well that yeah, very 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 slight leak I'm now adding a uh, a rubber washer with a, a brass ring around the outside I dry fit it already before Put the cameras off to make sure it would fit we're gonna put that in there and top up the oil put the oil in the motor and we'll make sure that that's uh, that that's gonna give us a seal and that washer is the Need a number 65274 half inch M12 uh, drain plug gasket. Brandy new oil filter on this motorcycle, so we're not changing that, so I shouldn't really need that much oil. Plug threads in real nice. I'm gonna check the service manual torque spec. I think it's 15 pounds. I think I was actually at 20 before. 
But we are, I did bring out the larger torque wrench out of the garage. And then we'll set it up to the correct torque. Oil drain plug. 21 newton meters, 2.1 kilogram meters, 15 foot pounds, 1.5 foot pounds. So let's set up our torque wrench for 15 foot pounds. And we get a leak, I know I can safely go to 20 on it. Alright, so I'm going to, it's set right now at 20. So I'm going to just back it off. This one is a little larger, it's calibrated in half foot pound increments. So we're now at uh, 19.5, 19, 18.5, 18.5, 17, 17, 16, 5, 16, 15, 5, and there's 15. 15 line zero on there. Okay. And uh, where I decide this thing was, it was like a 15 millimeter star something fit it. 16 millimeter star that fits it. I think. Yeah. Alright. So we're gonna go under here with the torque wrench and tighten her down real quick. Start adding some oil and we'll look for drippies. Cranking, 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 cranking. Oops, slipped off the nut. It's not the right size. These uh, replacement things, they've got to be some in between size. That's a, that's a 16. I'm going to try a 15. Uh, 15 fits much more snugly. at only 15 foot pounds. I don't know. Let's see what happens when we put oil in it. Got a nice thick rubber washer on here, so maybe no drippies. Alright, we're gonna start with quart number one. This is all I've used in this motorcycle for many many years. Valvoline Dyno type 10W40 motorcycle oil. Uh, it's worked very well for me. So I know we need about one and three quarter quarts if we didn't do a filter change. So I'm going to go one full quart. We'll pull it up on the on the side stand. We'll see what happens. One full quart going in. That's one quart. Put another in right now. I'm hoping to God we don't see any oil come out the bottom. Gonna go back. Now let's see, this is 900 cc's, right? 946 cc's. I know they say 1700 for a uh, no filter change. I don't know if that includes removing the engine cover or not. About a quart and a half. I can always add it, it's much easier to add it and take it out. First thing we want to see is there any oil dripping out from under this damn thing? That's my first question. Get that new plug in there. Are we wet or are we dry? We look dry. Dry is good. Dry tells us nothing until the engine's been running for a while though, so I'll wipe it off nice and clean. I want to make sure we're nice and clean under there so any oil that I see, if I see oil on this plug, it's coming from the plug. But right now I don't see a thing, so that's a good thing. Good place to start. Zero oil. It's a good place to start. Clean paper towel, clean towel of some sort or another under here so I can see. Because the driveway is a little greasy from working on motorcycles, huh? <laughs> Throw a nice clean towel over there. Make sure that I can see any while it's coming out. Let's bring the bike up on a side stand here. Wipe this window off. Bring the bike up on the side stand so I can see how much oil I gotta put in still. Children, do not try this at home. Scoop that drop motorcycle under yourself. But you can feel that balance point when you get to it. Do not see any love in that window yet, but that window is very cloudy. That was a missed opportunity while I had that cover off there to clean the window, but thankfully for an iPhone, I had a dandy little flashlight. Just at the bottom of the window, so we're going to have a little bit yet. 
And then once we uh, yeah, the bike level, just at the bottom of the window. All right. Once we uh, fire the motor up, I might have to add a little more anyway. But that's not going to happen until after I get the exhaust done and the early adjustment on the clutch done. Right. We'll add about a skosh or so. That's a skosh. Big skosh, but a skosh nonetheless. Maybe another. Make it a skosh and a half. To the full line, which is exactly where you want it before you start the engine. Once you start the engine, some of that oil is going to go up in the top of the motor, let it drain down. And you might need to add a little more. What you don't want is over the full line. Okay, pull this out of here. I'll put cover back on it. Oil plug, fill plug. Check the timing on these cameras here. And then the next thing we got to do is get this clutch arm adjusted correctly. That's going to be fun.